Hello, my name is Janet Curlew, and today I share my story on why I created Women in Trade magazine, the UK's only publication focusing focusing on women's trades. It's a great publication for young girls and older women wanting to get into a trade as well as those who are already qualified. In 2012, I moved to a new area where I did not know anyone. I had no furniture as it was delayed due to snow and stock issues. I slept on the floor for three months and lived on microwaved foods. On the eighth week, I remember looking inside my purse and found three pence. I sat and cried and wondered what I was supposed to do with my life now that I had no job as I was made redundant. The furniture company finally got in touch with me with a delivery date and I also had some news of funds that were due to come to me. I started to get really excited about the prospect of having furniture and started to look for tradespeople as I needed a plumber, electrician and a carpenter. At the time I did not want a man coming into my new home, not because I was afraid, I just felt like I wanted to try something different. I started to look for women that did this kind of work and I was surprised to find women qualified to do the job. I started to research and found more women doing what was perceived to be a man's job and I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice to have a list of these women that we could go to as I know there are organisations who deal with vulnerable men and women who either need or prefer the female approach. After seven months, I finally started to feel human again. (laughs) Furniture arrived, no more microwave food. (laughs) I started to play around with the idea which developed from a list to wanting to write about these women and their stories and it was then that the idea of a magazine came about. It was daunting but I felt this surprising inner strength from nowhere. So, in 2013, I decided to make a very bold move. By putting this idea into action, I contacted Lynn Franks, the founder of London Fashion Week, to be my first cover story. Within five minutes, I received a message back from Lynn saying, Yes! I nearly fell on the floor out of shock. I did not have the name of the magazine. I didn't have a proper email address, I was using Gmail. From then onwards, my covers, I have featured Alex Polizzi, known as the Hotel Inspector, our former First Lady Sherry Blair, the property expert Sarah Beanie, and interior designer, who was also a dragon on BBC One's Dragon's Den, Kelly Hoppen. So, what's behind the name? Well, it's funny as I was not confident with the name Women in Trade for years. But later I realised it was a good name as people were starting up organisations and groups using my name, Women in Trade. It hurt at first because, you know, I know how hard I had to work for that name. But now I smile and think to myself... That's a great name. Everyone wants to use it. I also noticed at the time that no one was really highlighting women in a trade in a big way until I came along. So I'm proud of that. People often ask, why trade? Well, firstly, I wanted to help women get over the feeling that to be in a trade, they must look and behave a certain way. And secondly, I was fascinated to see how many women were doing these types of work and wanted to highlight that whilst giving them a platform to share their stories and feel good about what they do. The magazine offers not only inspirational stories, but there is the 
holistic side too, which is very important to me. We cover articles on how to feel good and look after yourself when working in harsh environments because, to be fair, a lot of these women don't feel great on site due to being the only female there. For the first year, it was scary, exciting and hard work as I had to wear all the hats into the second year. It took a toll on my health and I ended up in hospital in the second year for 30 days where I can only describe this experience as a near-death one. Every time the consultant came into my room, I thought to myself, any minute now he's going to tell me I have a certain amount of time to live. But instead, after being in intensive care, he said, we are going to operate. And (laughs) you could see that he was trying to play down the fact that this was serious. Thankfully, the operation went well. I saw this as a sign that I have been given a second chance of life. I am grateful that although the operation was serious, they found nothing life-threatening. But had this thing not been removed, it could have been. I was so weak, I could not walk or eat properly. I felt like the magazine was over. But just, but I just knew I had a purpose and that there was a reason I survived. So I took another bold move and contacted the former British number one, the former British number one Wimbledon champion, Annabel Croft, to be on our sports issue cover. And she said yes. I was so excited and surprised. I took this as a green light from the universe to keep going and I am glad I did as in 2019 amazing opportunities presented themselves to me. My magazine was spotted by a marketing person for the business show and they invited me to partner with them and they offered me a stand at the show which took place in November 2019 at the Excel Centre in London and this was my first trade show. It was around the time the coronavirus was just starting to slowly come to the surface which was scary. At the time the opportunity came I was already exhausted by all the exciting changes that were happening with the magazine and in my life. This opportunity felt like hard work as I had to help my team arrange the show banners and other marketing materials to attract visitors to our stand. I want to, I want to make a point here that, you know, we can often miss opportunities because They don't always come organised in a pretty box with a bow on top sometimes. They come as a stressful bundle of mess. (laughs) It was an inspiring and interesting event, which I thoroughly enjoyed. After the show, I received an invitation to partner with a charity who invited me to the House of Lords in February 2020, where I met the Queen's cousin. I also was invited to Australia in March 2020 by a company that visited my stand at the show. I was asked to be a delegate for a five-day tour of Melbourne and all I had to pay for was my flight. It was scary. Plus, to add to that, it was just when the virus was just starting to make it into mainstream news. It was a difficult time as I was getting out of my comfort zone, travelling halfway around the world on my own, and the virus made it very hard to see this as a see this as a special opportunity, but it was, and I am so glad I went to Australia. I had the opportunity to watch the T twenty women's cricket final at the famous Melbourne Cricket Grounds in a private 
suite laid on by the Victorian government, and it was great to watch Katy Perry perform live. One other memorable moment was my first live fashion runway show, which was the Global Indigenous Runway. That was amazing. So I am living proof that if you have a purpose or idea, just do it. Don't wait for the bank to knock on your door and say, "Here you go. This is for you to start." You will be waiting until you are old and grey. They certainly never helped me, and still haven't. All you need is you to start, and then, like me, you figure out the rest as you go along. I hope my story. Inspires all the young girls and older women who want to get into a trade to get started today. Pick up that hammer, screwdriver, paintbrush, and own it. Drive the truck. Get into engineering. Explore options as a trade is for life, and no matter what life throws at you, you can always fall back on your trade. It's not about gender. It's about moving forwards in your life with passion, and if that means doing what is perceived to be a man's job, then so be it. Just make sure you love what you do, as everything we rec- as everything we create reflects how we feel. So, if you don't like what you do, people will see that in your creations. It's not all high vis and hard hats. You got to take care of yourself. So, before I go, my readers have asked me a few questions, so I'm going to answer them now. What do you love? I love to walk, write, knit, and bake. Dislikes? How much time do you have? <laughs> Cruelty to humans and animals. Tell us something surprising about yourself. I was the fastest two hundred meter runner in my school borough, and I have a gold and silver medal. I also horse ride once a week. I started a year ago, and I cannot wait to start galloping through the fields and forests. What, what cannot, what I, I, what I can't live without? My Nutri Ninja smoothie maker and meditation. What are you grateful for? My health. What do you believe in? I believe that everything is energy, so you can change the way you feel by changing the energy around you through thought and intention. And if people copy you, if people copy what you do, it's because they admire you and want to be you. So be proud of that. Thank you for listening.